And I'll tell you what, I can't believe it's already September. Holy fuck, this year went by so fast. And honestly, this is the one year I am glad to say that, thank God, it's gone fast. Because this year has been freaking terrible for so many goddamn reasons. I don't even want to talk about it. You guys know why you're here watching this video. So yeah, here we go. Let's get it over with. What is going on, E Nation fans? This is Ian Perez 48 here, back again with another episode of Racing Topics with Ian Perez. And today, I know this is late, but I might as well get it over with before I forget. Because I love Daytona. Uh, whenever there's like a Daytona race going on, whether it's NASCAR, maybe IMSA, but I don't know. I, I don't know why I didn't do the two IMSA race reviews. Not reviews, but like a talk or whatever. Or reviews. I don't know. Anyway. So, I want to do, like, Daytona review videos because Daytona National Speedway means that much to me. And I just love talking about it. It's my all-time favorite motorsports track, not just NASCAR. The Daytona 500 is my all-time favorite motorsports race. And yeah, I already said Daytona is my all-time favorite motorsports track. Anyway, so, I want to review about what happened throughout the Daytona August weekend because... Normally, it would be on the 4th of July weekend, right? Well, guess what? You're wrong, because NASCAR prefers entertainment over tradition. They will break tradition just to make things more gimmicky and entertaining. I don't care if that's a word or not, but anyway. I, I'm i sorry for the glare. Hold on. Okay, I think this is good enough. Anyway, so where do we begin? Let's start off with the Xfinity Series race. Um, where do I begin? Honestly, the the one of my personal favorite parts about that race was hearing the mix of modern restrictor plate engines, and you can hear some parts of the Gen Fours. Honestly, it's so beautiful. Trust me, I I've heard the Gen Four sound last year's uh, Xfinity race. From Cole Custer's. Whenever you go on board with Cole Custer, especially qualifying, you can hear the Gen 4 sound. I'm like, oh my god, that's just so hot. It's beautiful. So yeah, that was one of my personal favorite parts about that race. How about the overall race? <laughs> just a typical Daytona restrictor plate race for the Xfinity series. Like, eh, like you'll get pack racing for most of the stages and when it's down to the closing laps. There's single foul, then you make a move on the last lap. I think the overall race was all right. I don't know if it was better than February's race. I don't know, but it was an all right race. A couple of big crashes. Honestly, NBC Sports Network did not do the best of a job for showing the angles of the incident because we didn't even get a we didn't even get a good angle of Jeffrey Earnhardt's crash. Cody Vanderwall, like the crash in turn one. Uh, when I had like what Jeffrey Earnhardt, Cody Vanderwall, BJ McLeod, I think. I think there was like a three car wreck in turn one. They did not do a good job with the angle. They only showed one angle, and it was the top of the uh, tower. I think that's what you call it. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Anyway, so yeah. The second big one, I mean, no, the first big one, um, Brandon Jones, like, I know people were putting blame on Brandon Jones. What happened was that Timmy Hill was slowing down a bit, Brandon Jones and everybody else was catching up, and then Brandon Jones had nowhere to go, and then, yeah, that happened. I don't really blame Brandon Jones because he had nowhere to go. I, I hate to say this, but it was on Timmy because he was slowing down, because so I guess he was losing momentum above cars ahead of him. But hey, it was just a racing incident. Shit happens. It's restricted plate racing. It's Daytona. Now the second big one, once again, Justin Allgaier gets into it. And then uh, they start off with a couple of crashes. A couple of cars crashing, turn three and four. And the next thing you know, holy crap, we got more cars piling up. Like, where the hell did they come from? I don't know. Oh yeah. Also the Joe Gap Jr. crash. Honestly. Here's the thing. I don't hate jo Joe Gap Jr., but 
Come on, have you guys not seen how he is on track? It's not surprising whatever he does. That's what he gets for rushing, but another reason he's just no, just mm, mm -mm. but yeah. How do you go down like that on another driver? What the hell? I thought like, oh, car got into Joe Grab Jr. and then all that, but nope, that's not what happened. He went down on someone, and then I think Jeffrey Earnhardt was in it. I god. Anyway, so then the rest of the, then the remainder of the race, the final stage, I don't want to say stages, but I have to, whatever. It was just single file racing, I know, like, a lot of you guys know that I'm a Calig Racing fan. Hell yeah, but the racing was, was just, yeah. I don't know what they did with, the, I don't know why restricted plate races always do single file, because I know they did it on Gen 4s, it wasn't that often on the Gen 5s, but... They do it on the Gen 6 more often until the cup package came last year. But for Xfinity, from what I know since last year, they you they have the they have they they drive harder because it's like a cup car. From what I heard, don't take my word for it. So maybe that's why. So yeah, there was single file and a couple laps ago. There was like random moves. Justin got all got not Justin all got Justin Haley was being ditched while everyone was working together, racing each other and all that. And then on the white flag, AJ Allmendinger led the last lap, and then Ross Chastain had the had a good run on AJ Allmendinger. And then turn three happened. Ross had the run on the inside. AJ Allmendinger went down to block, but it was too late to block. And then Ross Chastain and AJ Allmendinger crashed. Michael Winnett got collected. Austin Cindric got in it. I guess who made it through? Justin Haley. It's the luckiest NASCAR driver ever, honestly. Wait, where's that luck? I wish Ross Chastain had better luck. And then Justin Haley won the Xfinity race with Greg Golding second again. Wow. But I would. Yeah, here's the thing. I'm a Catholic fan. It was good that Justin Haley brought home another one for Catholic racing. However, I was more devastated that Ross Chastain lost. Like, I'm a huge Ross Chastain fan. He's my home state driver, my home state hero, home county hero, and all that. And it's just, it was just heartbreaking to see Ross Chastain just have that happen. I wasn't mad at, I was frustrated at AJ, but I wasn't, like, mad at him. But, like, why, man? Like, Ross had to run on your inside. Why'd you block? He blocked too late. I don't know why. I just want to see Ross win this year. I know he's been finishing second a bunch of times. He's been close to winning it all, but nope. Can't close the deal. It's so frustrating. I want to see Ross win. I love seeing Kyle Racing win, but I want to see Ross win more. Justin Haley won two races. Even A.G. Allmendinger won a race this year at Atlanta. And Ross Justin has none. None. I just want to see him win. So, yeah. As of now, from the non-chase point standings, or point in racing reference, um, I think Austin Cindric is still leading ahead of Chase Briscoe for points. Now, Chase, suck it, NASCAR. Dumbasses. And now the best for last is the uh, Coke Zero Sugar 400 at Daytona, the Cup Series at Daytona. The hyped up race for the wrong reason. <sighs> anyway, let's just get over. So, Harvick started on the pole because of this BS formula starting grid thing. It's, it's NASCAR. NASCAR always finds a way to make things so complicated, just like the chase, uh, just like the elimination chase. I don't understand. What, what formula? I don't get this shit. I don't even like to draw, but the formula thing is stupider. I know we can't qualify, practice, and all that because of COVID, because health first, because, oh, NASCAR's in cost money saving mode from what I heard. Oh, like, okay, but like, God, it's so stupid. Anyway, so like, how was, how was the entire race? Surprisingly... I thought it was going to be some stupid wreck fest of a race, an insulting race to me, because 
because it's a pre gimmick chase race. I call it. I'm not going to I'm not going to call the I'm not going to call that race the regular season finale. I'm not a show seeker fan. I'm not stupid. I'm not gullible. Anyway, so for a pre gimmick chase race, I thought it was going to be like a wreck fest or what driving dumb. Oh, just to get oh, just to get stage points, just to get a win, to get in a chase. For what? So you can get eliminated when you do nothing? <sighs> That's the problem I have with the elimination chase format, but I really hope I do a video about that because I have lots to say about that. You guys know how I am. Anyway, so I thought it was going to be like some Wreckfest gimmicky race, but honestly, I know the I know the the first couple stages was okay. Like, hey, they had some pack racing. Hey, they had some single file racing. I'm honestly, from the deep down, I was honestly glad that there was no Wreckfest for the first couple of stages. Because Wreckfest racing is a turnoff for me. It's a huge turnoff. Like, look at the trucks at Pocono this year. That was a huge turnoff. One of the worst races I've seen this year for trucks. Half the races were ran under yellow. As for Cup, first two stages, hey, no Wreckfest. I'll take that. And then the final stage, like, hey, most of the final stage, um, everything was fine, like, hard racing and all that. That's cool. Um, hell yeah. And then James Davison had a tire down, I think. Apparently he crashed, but guess what? NBC did not show it. I don't think they, I don't think there was an angle of it or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it was James Davison that brought up the yellow. I know it was a record car. So correct me if I'm wrong. And then this is where shit goes stupid. So restart happened, and then with eight laps to go, Kyle Bush led some laps. Honestly, and I'm like, oh, can finally can Kyle Bush finally win? Can find can he finally get a good finish? Nope. Tyler Reddick um makes a run. And then as soon as he goes to as soon as he goes to leave, he makes a terrible block on Kyle Busch, hits the wall, all hell breaks loose, Eric Jones autocorrects, everybody wrecks, and then the crash gets it to Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch was in it, thankfully Ricky Stiles Jr. is in it, Ryan Newman's in it, just a lot of people were in it. And what about 2020 Kyle Busch? What about 2020? It's still 2020. Yep. It's still 2020. Yep. Can't wait for this year to end. And then, um, and then, and then Ryan Newman roast, roasted Tyler Reddy. Here's what's ironic about Ryan Newman and why I don't even like Newman. Ryan Newman will do the exact same thing. He will do a bad block. He would put someone in the wall for 40th on the first lap. He would do all that. And yet he calls out Reddick for that. Ryan Newman, I'm sorry, but Ryan Newman's a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. He will do the exact same thing. And no disrespect to Ryan Newman. I'm glad he's alive. I'm glad he's on his feet. I'm glad he's still racing. I'm glad he's still healthy with his family, with his daughters, and all that stuff. I don't wish death on any drivers or anything hurt, or any driver hurt. But here's the thing. Ryan Newman almost died for that. Yet he calls out Tyler Reddick for that. The only excuse that Reddick has is that he's a rookie. Other than that, yeah, he knows. Yeah, I knew what Reddick did was a bad block, but Ryan Newman has no room to talk, honestly. If you guys like Ryan Newman, no offense, but like, no disrespect. But Ryan Newman will do the exact same thing, and he almost died for it. So, yeah. And then the second big one, like Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin. Oh man, they're just killing each other. Bubba Wallace was there, and then, oof. And then the, another big one happened. Another big one happened. Bubba, Bubba made it through. William Byron made it through. Denny Hamlin made it through. Logano did not. Matt Kenta did not. Jimmy Johnson did not. Tyler Ruddick did not. A bunch of cars involved. And then because the stupid chase is here. The big story was about Jimmy Johnson not making it for the second year in a row. Jimmy fans, I'll get to that in, 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 later. And then... 
and then um the last restart happened Denny Hamill was leading and then William Byron and then on the last lap I don't know everyone just feels stupid yeah, everyone's just stupid I don't know, I'm sorry. Everyone just drove like, eesh. Clint Boyer hit the wall. And then Christopher Bell took out Corey Joey, And then Eric Amarillo got in it. And then, I don't know. I think Harvick hit the wall too, apparently. And then Ty Dillon got in it, and he was on fire. Like, Christopher Bell hit the wall, turned three, because he had a tire down. And then, as a Hendrick fan, happy to say this, William Byron is the first time William Byron got his first career win at Daytona with Hendrick Motorsports, bringing the 24 back, thing, back in victory lane. I'm happy to say that. As a Hendrick fan, that was awesome. That was awesome. So yeah. So that's what happened to the Daytona weekend. I expected it to be like a gimmick race because of the chase, stupid chase, stupid elimination chase coming up. But thank God it was not as bad as I expected. So, what was the best race of the weekend? That's a tough question. I don't know. What do you guys think? And also, one more thing for you, Jimmy Johnson fans, who were disappointed, sad about not about Jimmy not making to the chase. To be truthful, as a Jimmy fan, I didn't care if he was going to make it or not. To be honest, I know I might get hate for this, but I did not want Jimmy in because, because I kn knew he was not going to get his eighth chase championship. It, he, he wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't happening. I know it's because of Charlotte disqualification. I know it's because of COVID. But even if he wasn't a chase, he would not be a contender. With a stupid format, everyone's a contender. NASCAR just, NASCAR's stupid. You, but you can thank Brian France for that. Um. Anyway, to make things better, Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Johnson, he has that fire in him. He knows, and I know, and everybody knows, he can still compete for wins. He still got it. Even He even has the power of Rally, the white Rally car. He still got it. Unfortunately, he has not closed the deal. There's 10 more races left until Jimmy retires. I think Jimmy can have can get at least one more win. Just one more win, Jimmy. Come on. We're rooting for you. And he still got it. He just needs to close the deal. Whenever Jimmy hopefully wins for the next 10 races. Oh, everyone's going to be happy. So, for all you Jimmy fans who were disappointed about Jimmy not getting to the chase... Do not worry. He's been doing decent. He's even been like, he's the fire still in him. All right, he can show that he can still win. He just needs to close the deal. And whenever Jimmy wins, we're all gonna be happy, relieved, and it's a good send off. So let's go, Jimmy. We're all rooting for you, bud. I'm rooting for you. So yeah, unfortunately the chase is here once again. Oh, that's gonna be the end of me for the sixth straight year because of the stupid format. I'll save that for another video if I'm not lazy. So yeah, enjoy the gimmicks. But Daytona weekend, I think it was all right, but, but it was insulting for me to remove tradition to make it entertaining. Like, the Daytona 400 was better off as a firecracker 4th of July weekend. I don't know when that's... I don't even know if that's going to come back. Because NASCAR cares about entertainment, bullshit gimmicks, and please show Seeker fans and continue to abandon racing fans. Although NASCAR is probably in the fix, but hey, I'm tired of this shit. This is all thanks to Ryan France. I just hope NASCAR just fixes themselves. I know it's going to take time. It's going to take forever, but hopefully the way will be worth it. I'm just tired of these stupid gimmicks. Tired of it. I watch motorsports for the racing, not stick and ball sports on wheels. So, yeah. Having the Daytona. Having Daytona as a pre-gimmick chase race, it was extremely insulting. But... 
thankfully it was not it was not like a wreck fest race so i'll give them that so that'll do for today's video thank you guys so much for watching this video comment like and subscribe for more follow my social accounts instagram i'm Ian press 25 and Ian press 40 48 underscore yt like my facebook page e nascar 40 dash nation film sorry don't forget to follow me on reddit links in the description below thank you guys for supporting E Nation, don't forget to turn on my channel and notification for more content. Thank you guys for supporting E Nation. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everybody. And don't forget to wear your mask because the cases are going down. Now, this might go up again. But please, please, wear your mask, social distance, be healthy, and all that stuff. Don't be stupid. Don't be a Karen. If you want to go back to another race, do what I say. All right? Please, 2020 has been terrible. Let's, let's end 2020 at least on a good note. Please, but help everybody put the cases down. Goodbye.